Hello everybody, Notarad here. Just doing a quick introduction to the DX Tori, a program that I've just discovered recently. You'll see in the credits who I got the information from. I'm going to be using this to record my gameplay from now on. It's so much better than Fraps because it doesn't separate my files into separate files uh, once I get to the certain size. And it doesn't drop frames, which means my audio always matches up with my video now, which is great saving time of editing. So if you go to uh, www.dxtory.com, you can find out all the information. You can download a, a uh, free version of it. Uh, what it'll do is put a watermark on all of your videos, but uh, at least you'll be able to test it to see if it's what you want. Or the licensed version, which is about 40 to 50 bucks Canadian, which is very cheap. Right here on the information page, the first thing I want to point out is the environmental information. If you click on that, a little window will pop up. It'll give you everything that you wanted to know and didn't really care about, about the computer environment, the recording environment, and all of your settings. This is handy. You can uh, save it as a file so that if you ever go to install the extra on a different computer, then um, you, you have all the settings that worked out best for you. It took me a long time, a few days of just tweaking all the settings to find out how it best worked for me. So what I did is I found out what were the least amount of settings were that were able to give me a quality video to at least upload to uh, YouTube. So um, I wanted to find out what the lowest, lowest settings were that I could do. I couldn't find anybody that did this, so I did a quick demo here. So across the top, you'll notice that you got the different tabs. The first one is just, I wouldn't even worry about that. You can find out more at uh, the website about it. First one that you're going to use is the overlay settings. I have everything checked. If it's not recording, it'll show up as a green number in the left-hand corner of my game. If it is recording, you can select whatever color you want. I chose red. Click on it. The drop down box will give you all the different colors that you can choose from under the rainbow almost. And once you select your color, just say OK, and that's what color it will show up. Over in the file settings, the folder settings. Now, this is great because you can set up two different hard drives, physical hard drives, not partitions, that'll save your files a lot faster. And this is where it doesn't drop your frame rates because it's writing uh, one bit to the uh, first hard drive and then the next bit to the second hard drive so it's not a whole bunch of read write errors or uh, slowing down your system the more physical hard drives you have the faster you can get the resolution but I just wanted to find out what the minimum requirements were for mine and once I got them set up in there then I can click on the benchmark and quickly benchmark what each drive will do all you got to do is say run. It only takes a few seconds. It'll tell you how many megabits per second uh, average it'll take to write to that hard drive at that time. What you want to do is have your write speed the same for both drives. It'll just make things run a lot smoother. So we'll just let that finish. That's 56. We'll say OK. So it populates it automatically. We'll do the other one real quick. So that one's 45 megabits per second. So I want to make sure these are the same. So I can right click on that, edit the right speed, and let's say 40 megabits per second. That should be plenty. And we'll make them both the same. I found out that's just fine. It records OK, not a problem. And you can add uh, more hard drives or folders and remove them as you want. Next tab over, shortcut keys. If I set them up, all you got to do is select start, stop your uh, movie capture. Just push whatever button that you want to start using and it will populate it for you. I use F9 because that's what I got used to with fraps and that's just that easy. Over in the movie tab. Now, this side over here, it's important. This is the stuff that records, not what your game is set at. You can play your game at whatever resolution you want and have your recording at a very low resolution. 
So you can do your frames per second for recording all the way up to 120, whatever you choose. Now the output, you can choose a file output such as uh, AVI or raw caps, uh, file output only. Now if you do streaming while you're gaming, you can use this program to do push that out to the stream as well. You can save it as a file and put output to the stream or just put it out to the stream all by itself. And you can find out more information about that at the website as well. I just use the file output. I use raw cap. That way it'll spread my file over the different hard drives. So I have half of my file, such as this one here, 1.53 gigabytes. And that's only half the file. If I go over to my other directory, there's the other half of my file, 1.53 gigabytes. And you can put these together, uh, I'll show you how later on, but it spreads it out so it's not all in one spot and the read write of that one physical hard drive isn't overwhelmed. Okay, so I use raw cap. That will do that. If you only got one hard drive, don't worry about it. You can do AVI or raw cap, whatever you choose. Uh, caption, I include the mouse cursor in my recordings. Synchronize, don't use that. That just uses up, uh, that'll synchronize your recording with your video. And you don't want to do that. It just uses up more CPU. Now the scaling, this is where I mentioned that you can be playing the game at whatever resolution you want. But you can do your scaling down to your recording because it doesn't need to be as drastic as uh, what you play at because uh, YouTube, for example, will only show 70, 20 the maximum anyway, right? So you can go either by percentage, 100% of whatever you're playing your game at, 75, 100, or you can actually type in the size. Now this is the lowest size that I found. It'll record. A, a not too bad recording at. You don't want to go much below this. And this will help you out to start out. Nobody shows you how to populate this stuff. But this isn't a bad recording here. The next tab over. You can select up to eight recording devices. Such as I have two set up. I have the game set up. Just tell it what device you want to record. That's my headphones. Whatever sound I hear in my headphones is going to be coming over that. You can set up your microphone so you can do live commentaries. You can set up, uh, if you use Skype to talk with your pals, doing your video chat, whatever, included in your um, video is great. So I'll just remove that one. I only record on two channels. I'll show you the benefit of that because you can actually separate your sound from your video. So if say you were doing a live commentary during a video and you just screwed it up left, right, center like I'm screwing this one up, you can separate the audio from the video. You can put your video into your video editor with uh, your audio separated. You can put your gameplay audio in there and then just re-record your voice over top. Or if the you find the game is too loud, you can't hear your voice during your commentary, you can separate them, bring them back into your video editor, and just decrease the volume of the game and increase the volume of your voice, that sort of idea. So this is where it's really handy as well. Uh, my microphone, you also have the volume of your microphone from the game. It took a long time. I just have it at 60. That works great for me. Um, that would be a great start point for you to uh, test it out. Screen capture, I don't use that. Next tab over. I just leave it on default settings. You can force CPU processing. That'll uh, take power away from your GPU, from the uh, DxStory using your GPU. I'm just trying it out, check that. You can done check it if it's not doing anything. Uh, processing, th processing threads, you can use however many threads your CPU has. I just have mine set at two. One will do just fine as well. I'm just testing two out now. Uh, limit the video FPS. Now this is a video in your game, your live game. Now it'll, you'll notice um, 
your FPS will go up and down, up and down uh, during your gameplay. Now, 60 frames is just perfect. Anything above that, and you're wasting CPU and GPU uh, runtime. So I have mine locked down at 60. So it won't go above that and take up resources that I need for recording or for my display of higher graphics in my game. Next tab over, this is just about the program and how it displays on your computer uh, when you minimize it, that sort of idea. Okay, now I mentioned in the folder it separates it into two parts, half of it here, half of it there. Now how you can put that together, it has a built-in converter. Down here in the bottom left, click on that and the converter opens up. In the converter you add in Add in both of these. Open that. Add another one. Open that one. I have two different videos recorded. I'm just going to show you how they show up. Open that one. And open that one. So you'll notice that populating the thumbnails of each movie that I have, it'll give you the details of each one as well. How long it is the file format that you recorded it in, uh, frames per second, that sort of idea. What size the file is, I'll add it up. It'll tell you where part one is and where part two is. You can build a selected file. So if I want to only build that one or if I want to build that one, I can do that. If, say, I want to run my build overnight, I can select everything and say, build all the files. You can even do a preview of the raw file. Just push play. It'll play it out for you. But it's all there. You can see if it's the right file that you want and if the quality is good enough for you to waste the CPU and time rendering this sucker. So you can render it. Now over here are your settings. You can uh, have the output file, uh, your rendered file. It'll render into an AVI file. Saved in the same folder as your source file or specify a folder. I specify a different folder that way it's easier to find. Uh, during the build you can have it show a query, any questions that it will have or do it automatically if you uncheck that. Now source files. Click that and that will delete the source files after the AVI is built. That will keep you from having all these files on your hard drive built up in the raw format. Once it creates the AVI I don't use the raw files anymore, so rather than having a whole bunch of hard drive being taken up, I only want it being taken up by the rendered file and not my raw stuff. So I can have that set up so that it will delete my raw file after it's done with the conversion. And if you have a whole bunch of files here that you're doing, it will save each one to a different file. And you can let it run overnight and just click that box there. After it's done completing them all, then it'll shut down your computer for you. So that's about it. Any more information you want, uh, DXTory or there's all sorts of other sites. I have two sites uh, linked below. Just to follow this is going to be an actual recording using these settings that I just showed you. You'll see it's not too bad. It's not the best, but like I said, this is the lowest that I can set all my settings to have the quality where you can still read the wording on the screen and the audio and everything works out just fine.